Hey everybody, Will from Studio Zombie 3D here. Today, I'm going to take a look at my calibration process for the Cobra series. This was originally going to be one video, but I decided to break it into two. Today, we're going to start with the small Cobra. Alright, let's get right into it. Here we have our Cobra front and center. I've had a lot of questions about the extruder and hot end setup, so I'm going to start the video by taking the extruder and hot end apart first thing we're going to do is make sure our printer is powered off. The next thing we're going to do is remove the ribbon cable from the top. Just open up the clamps and the cable will pop right off. Once that's out of the way, we're going to remove the four screws on the side. Now, be sure to hold on to the hot end while you take the last screw out. It simply just comes off the gantry. Alright, the next thing we're going to do is remove the shroud. There's a screw in the top corner here, and then one on the outside of the shroud. Those are the two we're going to remove next. Alright, now all we have to do is remove the screw on the side here and the shroud will come right off the extruder. Alright, and here we are. The shroud just comes right off the front, exposing the hot end and the extruder assembly. Now, our next step is we're going to remove the leveling sensor from here. Now, there are only three screws holding this in place. First thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the cable. Be careful not to damage the wires or the plug. Next, we're going to remove the two outer screws and then loosen the one screw on the fan on the bottom. You won't need to remove the screw on the fan itself as it holds the fan in place and the leveling sensor. All you have to do is back it off a few turns and the leveling sensor should pop off. Now we can just remove the leveling sensor through the hole here. Alright, let's just put this out of the way. Next, I'm just going to lay this down on a table just to make it a little bit easier. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the cooling fan from the heat sink. There's just two screws holding this on, one on the top and one on the bottom. We're going to go ahead and pull these and move this out of the way. Now with the fan out of place, we can get to the three screws holding the heat sink on and the two screws that hold the hot end in place. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to loosen the two screws holding the hot end. You don't have to take these screws out, just back them off a couple of turns each and the hot end should slide out. Now you're going to want to be extra careful when you're removing the hot end so you don't damage the thermistor and the heater wires. We're just going to place this out of the way so we can remove the next three screws and pull the heat sink off. Now that we have the screws out, the heat sink just pops off. We're also going to remove the filament guide on the bottom here. Alright, here we have our extruder. It's a pretty simple setup. It might seem a little intimidating to take it apart, but it's really not bad. If you ever have to replace the bottom, make sure it's long enough to fit in the hot end and reach the top of the filament guide.
All right, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to replace the filament guide and then put the heat sink back on. Everything should just line up and pop back into place. Now, we're just going to replace the three screws. Now we can carefully reinsert the hot end. Be sure not to damage the wires for the heater or the thermistor. Reinsert the hot end and make sure it's flush with the bottom of the extruder. Now go ahead and tighten up the two screws just above it. Once you have them tightened down, make sure there is no play in the hot end. And it's solid and we're good to go. Now we can replace the cooling fan. Now we're going to go ahead and reinstall the leveling sensor. Just put the cable through the opening up top. You can use the bottom screw on the fan to help line up the leveling sensor so you can get the two outer screws installed. Now just go ahead and plug the leveling sensor back into the breakout board. Tuck the wire up out of the way. Next, we can go ahead and reinstall the shroud. Let's go ahead and put the hot end back on the printer. Just replace it on the X gantry bracket and reinstall the four screws. All we have to do now is plug the ribbon cable back in. Replace the plug and push it down. The clips on the side will move up. Just pinch them together to make sure it's locked and we're good to go. Alright, let's start our calibration. The first step in all my calibrations is to make sure our E-steps are set properly. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to measure 100 millimeters from where the filament enters the extruder. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to make a mark on the filament. Now we have it marked at 100 millimeters. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to connect our computer to the printer. That way we can extrude 100 millimeters and take a measurement. Use the supplied USB cable to connect your computer to the printer. You may need the USB drivers. I'll have a link in the description to them, as well as Pronterface, the software I'm going to use today. Here we are over on the computer. Click connect and heat the hot end to 200, and then send an M503. That way we can see what the current E-steps are set at.
This one is set at 405. All right, next we're gonna send a G91 to set it into absolute mode. And then we're gonna send a G1 E100 F60 and then hit enter. It'll start to extrude 100 millimeters, but it'll be pretty slow. Once it's done, we're going to take a measurement. Here we are back at the printer. We're just going to take a measurement and see where the mark ended up on our extruder. Alright, and it looks like it's about 3 millimeters under. Just a little over 3 millimeters. 3.1. So we're just going to use 3 millimeters. Now, we're going to jump back over to the computer and open the calculator. We're going to enter 100 as the expected extrusion. And we're going to divide by our result. We were under extruding by 3 millimeters, so we're going to enter 97. Next, we're going to multiply it by our current E steps, which was 405. You can go ahead and send an M503 to double check and make sure. And here it is up top, 405. Now, we're going to multiply the result by 405. And that's going to give us our new E steps, which is 417.5. Back over in Pranaface, we're going to send an M92 E417.5 and hit enter. Next, send an M500 to save. Also send an M503 to double check that it's saved. Scroll up, and here we are, 417.5. Let's move on to the flow. Now, I'm using Cura 4 for my example here. Cura 5 and the 5.1 beta seem to have some issues with the base mode. The first thing we're going to do is make sure all our flows are set to 100%. Also make sure you don't have support checked. Next, we're going to scroll down and enable Spiralize Contour Mode. Right here. Make sure Smooth Outer Contours is also checked. Next, we're going to slice, save the file to an SD, and print it on the printer. With our flow cube finished, we're going to take measurements of all four walls. I have a 0.6mm nozzle installed on my Cobra, so ideally we're looking for 0.6 walls. And this cube looks to be averaging about 0.62. Alright, next we're going to jump back over to the computer and figure out our flow percentage. Alright, back over at the computer, we're going to figure out what our flow percentage is. It's super easy. We're just going to enter 0.6 and divide by our result, which was 0.62. And here we are. Our flow will be 96%. With it being 96.7, I would go 97%. Also, for infill and initial layer, I like to have mine set about 2% higher. It just helps with the initial layer sticking. Alright everybody, 
That's my basic calibration routine that I like to run with my small Cobra. This will have you in a really good starting position. This, along with a good profile, you'll be able to get some really nice prints off of your Cobra. I'll run this calibration routine when anytime I get a new kind of material such as PETG or a different brand of PLA. It's always worth checking your e-steps and flow once in a while, just to make sure it's all good. Alright everybody, that's it for today's video. We'll see you again really soon. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more content from Studio Zombie 3D. And check out our various social media platforms for what's going on in the studio. Take care everybody and we'll see you in the next video.